uh, in the present socio-political environment existing in India, uh, it will pave way for the uh, systematic erasure of certain sections from what is counted as history, from what is counted as the social experiences of India. There is the systematic erasure of the subaltern classes, sections, castes and minorities from what is counted as India. This will be highly detrimental for the polyphonous character of India, its multiplicity, variety and plurality. Actually, this diversity should be reckoned as an asset of our nation, but instead NEP sees it as a burden. It calls it as fragmentation. That is a very wrong approach. NEP tends to homogenize things, uh, imposing certain ideas related to uh, Hindutva, which is highly different from Hindu Dharma. Uh, their version of Hindutva is very constricted. We saw this in our everyday life. This will naturally get reflected uh, if NEP is put into practice. As I told you earlier, these sections were very much there in India and they have contributed a lot uh, for Indian culture. Example, the Muslims in India. The Mughal dynasty was very much here and during that period, uh, Muslim Islamic culture flourished and this has contributed a lot for Indian culture as a whole. We have Taj Mahal, uh, Muslim architecture, ghazals, uh, Hindustani music. So our culture gets enriched, enriched by their presence. But in the present context, what we see is the erasure of their presence from Indian history. This is highly deplorable. Protest should be raised against such activities. Uh, earlier, two glorious episodes from Kerala history uh, disappeared from CBSC syllabus. One was Malabar mutiny fought by the Muslims of Kerala. The second one was Chanar struggle, struggle for covering the breasts of women, Chanar women. Chanar women hailing from uh, the backward sections. So this is a kind of obscurantism. What they try to do is a distortion of history. According to NEP, things will be regulated by a centralized agency called Rashtriya Shiksha Ayog from the pre-primary uh, classes, example, Anganwadis, from Anganwadis to PhD, everything will be prescribed and controlled by this centralized agency, RSA, uh, Rashtriya Shiksha Ayog, headed by Prime Minister. And they try to impose a kind of homogenization. As I told you earlier, the uh, most important asset of uh, India is its cultural diversity. So, any kind of homogenization will sabotage the richness of Indian culture. Each university has its own organic quality, its specificities. Uh, they should address uh, the immediate burning issues of the society around the universities. If you impose homogeneity, such specificities will be disappearing. This will be detrimental for both the educational sector and the society at large. Each university should be defined based on its genetics. They all have their own organic individuality. It should be maintained. This is what you call autonomy. In BHU, a notice was issued in search of 
young, uh, young researchers for establishing Manusmriti as a very appropriate text in Indian context. They wanted to assert that Manusmriti is superior to Indian constitution. Manusmriti was a text which, uh, which was offered to ensure discipline in a very feudalistic kind of social arrangement, which was very hierarchical, which was based on Chadurvarnya, uh, a pyramidal structure, age-old structure with untouchability and all. So, so uh, actually, Banaras Hindu University wanted to establish Manusmudi superior to Indian constitution. In a democratic country, in a democratic nation, Manusmudi will create far-reaching consequences, serious repercussions in the social fabric. Actually, third quality universities come to India because in developed nations, they seriously face the threats of economic a lack of economic stability, economic problems are there. Uh, in order to handle with these, they start to establish uh, open universities or their branches in other third world countries. They want to, uh, as, they want to get money. Profit oriented motive is there behind this. And we wholeheartedly welcome such universities here. This will be detrimental to Indian universities and Indian culture as a whole. If you study in an Indian university, you study Indian culture. You study India's economical uh, specificities, specificities related to the economic structure of India. But in a foreign university, you never pay attention to the specificities of Indian context. That is the difference. That will be more general, related to their nation.